Hey, what's up? This is Harry Wagner from Harry Situations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My vehicle's extended warranty. Yes, I see. Um, yeah, can you just hold on a minute? I just got a few fires to put out here. That's right. Today we're talking all about fire and fire extinguishers here at the Georgetown Fire Department. So stay tuned. We are here today with my good friend, Nick Simarusti from the Georgetown Fire Department. Nick is also a longtime off-roader, so I thought he would be the perfect person to talk to me today about fire extinguishers. We're gonna go over different sizing, different types, and we're also gonna get into how they work. So that was really the unique thing about this video is it's not just theoretical, we are gonna put these fire extinguishers to use for you here today. So my first experience with fire, I remember being a kid, I was probably about six years old. My dad had this big block Land Cruiser and uh, it backfired when he was starting it up. Fire under the hood, he grabbed my favorite blankie, tried to put it out, poof, the blankie disappeared. I've never quite forgiven him. But I went up and grabbed the hose from the house. In the meantime, my dad was able to get the vehicle started, sucked that fire back down through the intake and got it out. And um, it was pretty traumatic to me for me, but I'm willing to overcome that here today. Um, you know, is water a good way to put out fires, Nick? Well, it all depends on the fire. Generally a vehicle fire, probably not the best way unless you have lots of it. Lots of water. What was your first interaction with fire? Uh, my first uh, motor fire was on an airplane, a small airplane. I grew up on an airport and the plane came in and had an oil fire. And I was a small kid, didn't know what to do. So I was standing there struck in awe and somebody came and grab a, grabbed a fire extinguisher, stuffed the nozzle through the little opening in the cowling and was able to extinguish the fire. I always thought snakes on a plane would be terrifying, but fire on a plane sounds even worse, to be quite honest. Uh, so what type of extinguishers are there? Like, do you have any here that do use water? Yeah, so these silver fire extinguishers are kind of known as a water can. Okay. And those are good for like uh, wood, paper, kind of garbage, that, that kind of stuff that's like natural materials. And so we wouldn't want to use that on fuel or electrical. But when I think about putting up my campfire, for instance, I could use something like a water can for that? Yeah, absolutely. And the advantages are there you can refill them or, or what, what's yeah. the advantage of a water can? Are they less expensive? Uh, they, they are, they're still kind of the same price range as some fire extinguishers, but they are refillable. You can just refill them with water, recharge them with your air compressor, okay. and then you're back ready to go again. They're actually a really common tool for some firefighters to go in and fight small house fires. They can get ahead of the, they can get in there very quickly and cool down the fire while everybody else is getting the rest of the gear and the hose out, getting into the house. I've always been told that size doesn't matter. That's what people have been telling me my whole life, but we're here and I feel like this is me as a fire extinguisher. This is what I'm normally carrying with me, Nick, but this is a baby compared to most of the things you've got here on the table. I've got two and a half pound fire extinguishers in my vehicle. So uh, either chemical or like halon gas type fire extinguishers. But um, you know, I, you, everything here is bigger than two and a half pounds, like five pounds seems small here. So I usually, I've always thought if I carry a couple two and a half pound extinguishers, you know, they don't take up much room in the Jeep, um, but am I better off having a five pound extinguisher? Yeah, so the smallest fire extinguisher that, that I would personally recommend you carry in your vehicle is a five pound fire extinguisher. Wow, okay. Those two and a half pound fire extinguishers can be really useful. Like if you had it readily available, you know, within arm's reach, like maybe in front of your seat, you could maybe grab that if you had a fire in the dash and you were able to get ahead of it, but they really don't last very long. They don't have a lot of firefighting capability. So a five pound is the next step up and it's got a little more life left in it. And if you can get into a, a engine compartment fire with that pretty quickly before it really takes hold and gets ripping, you can get ahead of it with a five pound. The next step up would be a 10 pound. Uh, that's this guy right here. That's gonna be like what we carry or what the safety team carries on like the rebel rally is gonna be at least a 10 pound. That's their minimum. And then everything we carry, all of our apparatus here at the fire department, if it's gonna have a chemical fire extinguisher on it, it's gonna be one of these 20 pound fire extinguishers. I know once for me, a fire I had, I was in a race situation. This is probably about 10 years ago. 
and um, we were in a class one car, so the engine's in the back, and a rod went through the side of the block, and all this hot oil comes out, gets all over the exhaust. The engine's behind us, so we didn't even realize it until the power steering uh, pump stopped working because the, the belt had melted. And then we looked in the mirrors, oh, we're on fire. And we stopped, and you know, in a race vehicle, you've got your harness, you've got your pumper, you've got your head and neck restraint, window nets, all these things. And I'm all thumbs, I'm trying to get these things off, I'm trying to get this extinguisher out. And by the time I had uh, got out of the vehicle, my friend Sam, who was driving, had exited the vehicle and he had used like dirt and sand and he had just smothered this thing and got it out. So, um, yeah, are there other things in nature if you, yeah. if you don't have something at your disposal? Yeah, so, so ultimately, you know, if we can smother the fire with sand or dirt, you know, we're doing great. I, I'm sure everybody's seen that video online where the, the jet boat comes along and puts out the car fire that was on the shore. You could do the same thing if you could kick enough sand on it and smother it, you could do the same thing. To back up a little bit, what are sources, what can be sources of fires? Well, so, you know, everything has a burning point. Common things for us in, in the off-road world are gonna be, uh, you know, the fuel and the fluids that are in our vehicle, the wiring that's in the vehicle, the materials that the interior is made out of, the plastics that are in the vehicle, all those things can burn. So we have that fire triangle, right? So we have fuel, air and an ignition source so okay. if we take one of those away it should go away right so that so if we don't have an ignition source but we have fuel and air it's not going to light because otherwise the car would light going down the road but if we add that ignition source that that's heat and, and a spark it'll light on fire if we take the air away by smothering it with dirt the fire should go out if we take the fuel away like if it burns itself out or we're able to remove the thing that's on fire from the situation it, we'd put the fire out to. So for me, the motivation for this video came from about two years ago and somehow I was involved in three vehicle fires in one summer in 2020. And I've been looking for a place ever since then to make a video like this. And fortunately, Nick was nice enough to say, yeah, come down, let's do it. Uh, the first fire that I was involved in wasn't far from here on Interstate 80. Uh, luckily it wasn't my vehicle, but there was a vehicle on the side of the road on fire and I pulled over, I was all thumbs getting out my two and a half pound extinguisher. I run up to this vehicle, the people are out of it and they're watching and I reach underneath and I pull the pin and I use my extinguisher and in my mind, I was a hero for less time than it took the extinguisher to go out, which was just a matter of seconds and it didn't even really seem to slow it down. The whole vehicle was consumed. Other people stopped, they didn't have any fire extinguisher and um, unfortunately it was a total loss. And that was really eye-opening and humbling for me. Um, just a few months later, I was on Ultimate Adventure and my friend Ken, I was riding with him and I was relaying this story. And he said, oh, well, let me tell you where the fire extinguishers are in this vehicle. And a bit of foreshadowing, the next day, uh, he had a short in his headlight circuit and that short had burned off the insulation on the wire and the wire got red hot and the transmission cooler line was sitting right on top of it, melted through the transmission cooler line, flared up that fluid. We all jump out, we're trying to put it out, but the wire was still hooked up. We actually had to disconnect the battery before we could get it to keep from flaring up. But I felt much more prepared in that situation than I did just even in the previous one. Uh, and then like a month later, I had a Toyota pickup that I had bought I got in a trade, I was looking to flip it, and I had a buyer lined up. I was on my way to smog this thing, and a pack rat had built a nest in the, the heater. And so it was cold, it was in the morning, I turned the heater on, I'm going down the road, all of a sudden smoke starts coming out of the vents. I'm like, oh boy. And then I didn't have a fire extinguisher with me, so I pull over, and I basically had to wait. I, I had a gallon of coolant with me, that's all I had in this truck. And I had to wait until it kind of melted through the vents, and then I was able to use the coolant and extinguish it. But I think what I learned was, I think if you're prepared and you're calm, then you'll handle the situation much better. So Nick, tell us about the ABCs of fire extinguishers. I see some stickers on here, like this one has things crossed out, this one doesn't. Yeah, so our fire extinguishers typically are gonna tell us what they're good for. So A type fires or A type fuels are gonna be like, um, your 
naturally occurring stuff, really like like wood and paper, general rubbish, you know, fire or like garbage type stuff. B is going to be like flammable liquids, like gas, diesel, a lot of the liquids that are in our car, a grease fire in a kitchen, and then C is going to be electrical. So like if you're electric, like say your surge strip caught on fire behind your computer, that would be an electrical fire, or Maybe you had a Geo Metro on a car trailer that you were transporting and the winch got turned on somehow and pulled the whole front core support out of the Geo Metro and now the winch is on fire. That's an electrical fire. So that ABC fire would be fire extinguisher would be good on that as well. Why am I getting the impression <laughs> this is not a hypothetical situation? That may or may not have happened. <laughs> well, as you say these things, when I think about a vehicle, it seems like we have the A type inside of our vehicle, we've got B certainly in terms of fluids, right? Transmission fluid, engine oil, and then electrical too. I mean, that fire I had with Kenny was a, the result of a short circuit. Right. Yeah, so typically we recommend people to carry an ABC fire extinguisher in their vehicle. One of the bad parts about ABC fire extinguishers is if you inhale it, it can be really rough to breathe in and not so good for your lungs. Okay. So Halon fire extinguishers are a BC fire extinguisher, so flammable liquids and electrical, which is a lot of the things we encounter in a vehicle, and are a little bit better on our, you know, you can breathe through it. It's not necessarily good for you, but you can breathe through it and, and deploy that fire extinguisher while you're in the same enclosed space. Okay, and I carry one of those like in my camper on the back of my Ram, and my thought process was that uh, it wasn't gonna make as much of a mess as a chemical fire extinguisher, but I didn't think about the the mess it would make in my lungs. Yeah, this is the Halon is also um, what they carry in airplanes a lot of times. Okay. So we've got this element fire extinguisher here. These have become super popular, um, you know, small, it's like the size of a road flare, super light. I know they're catching on with popularity, but I have yet to meet anyone who's actually used it. So I'm really curious to try these all out. Let's light some stuff on fire. So Nick, how does this prop work here that we're gonna use today? So we've got a nice little wash tub down in here that we're gonna put some, some tar paper and some, a mix of diesel and gasoline in. That'll kind of represent some of the common types of fuels that we're gonna find in, in a car fire. We're gonna leave the hood up because this prop's getting a little worn out and the hood's kind of not real well attached anymore. And so then, you know, there's a fire under here. Where am I aiming at? Yeah, so, so some of the guidelines, you know, the standard guideline with fire extinguishers is PASS. PASS. So the acronym P-A-S-S. -S. So pull, pull the pin. Okay. Uh, aim the fire extinguisher so you don't shoot yourself. Where and, am I aiming at? And you're going to aim at the root of the fire. Okay. So a lot of people, that's their problem, is the fire is very big and, and you know, it's, it's all up here in your face. And they're like, oh, I got to get that fire. So they're spraying at the flames. But really, we want to spray at where the fire is coming from. Go to the source. Go to the source. Okay. So we're going to aim at the source, and then we're going to squeeze. That's that first S. Okay. P so pull, aim, squeeze. We're going to squeeze the lever to start shooting the fire extinguisher, and then we're going to sweep. We're going to sweep back and forth, depending on how big the root of the fire is. If the root of the fire is this big, we're going to sweep across the root of the fire. If it's this big, then it's a small sweep. And let's say you had a 10 pounder, would you just let her rip and use the whole thing up? Would you use half? Would you, psh, psh, how, how would you? Um... Yeah, so you don't, wanna, you don't wanna let the fire regain its foothold, right? Okay. So you wanna, the idea here is we're smothering the fire. So we're gonna use as much as we need to to put that fire out. If it looks like the fire is all the way out, we can let off. If it starts to reignite, we're gonna go again. If it's not fully out, we're just gonna shoot the, the whole fire extinguisher until we cool it, smother it, whatever we can do. Or run it. out of fire extinguisher. Right. Okay. All right, Harry, so remember pass, right? Pull, aim, pull, squeeze and sweep. Aim, squeeze and sweep. Now, obviously this is a simulation. We didn't actually set a car on fire, but I think it's a pretty good representation of how these different products work. So the first thing we're using here, this is, I think, what most vehicles have, if they even have a fire extinguisher. A two and a half pound chemical fire extinguisher, ABC. So I'm curious to see uh, if it's got what it takes to put this thing out. 
K. Is that all of it? It's not all the extinguisher. It smells like fireworks. So let's give it a second and see, let the smoke clear, per se, <laughs> and uh, we'll see what we got. I still hear some crackling and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it doesn't really last too long. Yeah, I think I think I counted about 12 seconds of actual run actual time. time. Yeah. And is this the sort of thing you would refill or you toss it and you get a new one? I think the two and a half pounds are, some of them are refillable, some of them aren't. But I think those ones are at a price point where you just replace it. Gotcha. Okay. And what about expirations on uh, fire extinguishers? Yeah, they definitely do expire, and especially in vehicles because the vibration of the vehicle causes the the dust in there, the chemical mm -hmm. in there, to uh, compact, and then it won't come out like it's supposed to. So let's take a look here, see if we got any flames. It's smoking pretty good still. So. This might be a good example of cooling it off enough that it's gonna stay cool enough until the fire department were able to get here. I wouldn't call this extinguished because it's still smoking pretty good. Mm -hmm. That means that it's still working its way through there and, and something's still hot. If you were out on the trail in the middle of the Rubicon, right. you're gonna have to take additional actions with this. So I'm that on the trail, all I have is a two and a half pound fire extinguisher. After using it, that's when I'm like grabbing dirt, see what water I have with me. Exactly, yeah, yeah, continuing that fight. You know, that gave you a really good leg up. Now you gotta continue. So maybe it's maybe it's removing some of that, that fuel out of there. So whatever's burning, you know, if it's a big chunk of burning plastic or your seat cushion, get it out of there and get it to a place that it can't burn additional things. You know, so you've cooled it off with the, with the fire extinguisher enough that maybe you can have your gloves on or whatever, move it out of there. Okay. But you can see now that this thing's Flared back up. Flaring back up. So, you know, this is a really common occurrence. Side of the road, somebody deploys their fire extinguisher, they're like, yeah, man, I got it. And then all of a sudden the flames kick back up. But I am curious to see, like, let's use the five pounder on this now and um, see what it does. Yeah. All right, Harry, you ready to go again? Yeah, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. So we've still got an ABC chemical fire extinguisher, pretty reasonably priced. So this is a five pounder instead of the two and a half pounder that we use. All right, well, pull. Those ones that have the zip tie, sometimes a good twist will break that. There you go. Thank you. And we're gonna aim for the base. Wow, so how long was that? I forgot to count. <laughs> the camera will tell. <laughs> it sure was a whole lot longer than the two and a half. I felt a lot more confident. It looks like a lot less smoke coming out this time, but we're still smoking. I think again, we're gonna be in the same situation where we're not just gonna rely on that to be out. We need to take further action. Okay. I can see what you meant too about if I had two, two and a half pound extinguishers, I use one and I stop to go get the other one and it flares back up where just having one five pounder is uh, is not exactly the same. It is more effective, right? All right, so this is a halon extinguisher. This is BC rated, but not a chemical extinguisher. These are supposed to be great for electrical fires and not have nearly as much mess. Right, so the, so the halon actually interrupts the chemical reaction of the fire. Okay. And that's how it extinguishes the fire. These do seem like they cost about twice as much as a comparable uh, chemical extinguisher. Yeah, that's been my experience too. So we'll see if it's worth it. All right. Okay, pull. Aim, squeeze. Sweet. Oh, 
Oh, for being right. small, I feel like that packed a pretty good punch. Yeah, it did a pretty good job. Yeah, still not completely out, but um, I mean, comparable to what we saw before from other extinguishers of no mess. Right. So what did you carry in the sidekick, the little tiny car? Uh, so I had an element fire extinguisher in it, which is the last one we're going to try. I've never used one, so I'm really curious to see how it works. Awesome. <laughs> All right. All right. So the last extinguisher we're using is this Element Fire Extinguisher. Um, I read the instructions beforehand, having not read one, used one of these before. So I take the top off, I pull this out of the bottom, there's a striker here, and then I start my pass process. So I'm gonna aim this at the fire. Maybe if you get closer. And it's melting. I will say it went for quite a while. Yeah. It, uh, it's quite possible the issue was user error, having never used one of these before, but, um, it's on fire. It is on fire. And Happy birthday. I didn't make a wish. Um, I can see the premise, but, and I like that it went for a long time, but I think it'd have to be a pretty small fire for this. Right. I, I, the only thing that I could see that was getting closer, and you're in right. fire department turnouts, right? With fire department structure gloves on. So, yeah, when I, I, I get imagine out of my any vehicle. closer than than that, you know, and without that stuff on. Right. All right. Well, we learned something here today, didn't we? Yeah. So that's it for this episode. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about fires and fire extinguishers. I know I certainly did. I wanna thank my friend Nick Simarusti and the Georgetown Fire Department for all of their help with this episode. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.